The cloud allows you to trade capital expenditure such as data centers and server hardware for variable expenditure and only pay for IT as you use it. And because of the economies of scale, the variable expenses are much lower than what you would pay to do it yourself. My name is Shijaz Abdullah. I am Head of Solutions Architecture for AWS Public Sector in the Middle East and North Africa. Throughout my vast experience helping organizations make decisions to migrate to the cloud, I've seen a lot of common pitfalls that many new customers make while uh, performing cost comparisons for cloud migration. And today, we're going to talk about just three of those most common misconceptions. Misconception number one, the cost of server hardware is not the same as the cost of EC2. Firstly, EC2 is a service with an SLA that provides secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. The hardware that you have on-premises, on the other hand, is physical infrastructure that you need to install, configure, manage, secure, virtualize and operate and provide all the physical data center environments and everything that goes with it, uh, including but not limited to cooling, uh, power, fire protection and physical security. So the cost of buying servers in your data center is not a like for like cost comparison with uh, a secure managed service like Amazon EC2. Secondly, with more than 400 instance types and a choice between Intel, AMD and AWS Graviton, EC2 is much more flexible and resizable than legacy data center hardware. You can change your EC2 instances with the changing needs of your business unlike the hardware that you purchase and you get locked into till the end of its life. These intangible cost benefits are absent in on-premises data centers and are not often properly accounted in cost comparisons. Thirdly, let's talk about the cost of designing for availability. Let's say you have two database servers for high availability and you need to have a third server in the disaster recovery site located at a distance from your primary production site for added protection. In the on-premises world, this means the added cost of building and maintaining two distinct data center facilities the cost of networking, virtualization, replication, power, and everything else that goes into it. How would you achieve the same uh, capability or the same goals on AWS? You simply create two EC2 instances and put them into two different availability zones. Now, availability zones consist of one or more discrete data centers with redundant power, networking, and connectivity within an AWS region. Availability zones also have low latency links between them, making it possible for you to spread your server clusters between them for high availability. Not only do you need fewer servers for availability, it also costs you nothing extra to leverage multiple availability zones. Misconception number two, the cost of a terabyte of disk storage is not comparable to a terabyte of cloud storage. AWS provides a number of storage options depending on the type, access pattern and retention requirements of your data. It is never a good idea to compare the cost of a one terabyte hard drive with an equal amount of cloud storage, although I've seen people do that. When comparing with regular storage attached to servers and Amazon Elastic Block Store or EBS, it is important to understand that EBS is a service that is designed for performance, for scale and for security. EBS also comes with snapshot and backup capability. Remember what I told you about availability zones uh, just a moment ago? EBS volumes are also replicated within an availability zone, offering five nines of availability. 
Now compare the cost of doing all that I told you with the cost of doing that on-prem with regular hard drives. Lastly, EBS is not the only storage service available on AWS. Depending upon the nature of your data, you may choose to leverage Amazon S3, for example, which offers 11 nines of durability uh, or a number of other storage services like EFS, for example. I think by now you'll agree that comparing the cost of a hard drive uh, with the cost of EBS or f with any AWS storage for that matter uh, would be anything but a fair comparison of cost. Number three, not accounting the cost savings from architectural decisions on the cloud. There are unique architectural patterns on the cloud that help organizations further save costs on the cloud through best practices. Uh, the AWS Well Architecture Framework has a cost optimization pillar which is aimed at just that. An example of that is the ability to save costs on the cloud by turning off things that you no longer need. You can't do that in a legacy data center. Similarly, you can scale compute when you need it without having to buy large servers that you won't use most of the time. We we talked about Amazon EC2, but that's just one of the 200 plus services that AWS offers. Most organizations start with the lift and shift approach, but that's not the end of your cloud journey. AWS presents tremendous opportunity to replatform and refactor your applications. For instance, you can modernize your application using containers and serverless, and you can break free from old guard expensive databases in favor of modern managed databases on the cloud, such as Amazon Aurora. When thinking about short term cloud migration cost, it is important to also think of the opportunity that is unlocked for longer term cost savings for your business. That's all we have time for today. If you're embarking on a total cost of ownership exercise or a TCO exercise for cloud migration, we can help. Thousands of organizations around the world have already gone down this path with AWS and we can share the experience with you. For more information, speak to your AWS representative or visit our Cloud Economics Center. Thanks for watching. Bye now.